Shalom. <clears throat> Welcome to the House of Ephraim. Today we're going to be reading through the 23rd chapter of the first scroll of Shemuel, Samuel. And if you've been watching these in seri this series in order, then you would have read the uh, listened to the rabbit trails slash tangent uh, video. And if not, go back and check it out because I think it gives us some good um, commentary and application, which, you know, I'm really big on application. I, I believe that we can read the scriptures uh, from a sort of just mental aspect and remember words that it says and events that happened and walk away not, not recognizing the witness that Haruak could make in our in our lives in our hearts regarding the, the the beauty of our Elohim, the reliability of our Elohim, the favor of our Elohim, etc. So go back and watch that one if you missed it, and uh, then come back and watch this one uh, because today we're going to go through the next phase of David's life or the manifestation of the Most High in the midst of David's life, in the midst of Israel, in the midst of Yehuda, etc., etc. Before we get started, let's pray. Baruch atah Yahuwah Eloheinu. Blessed are thou, Abael. You are the awesome one. You are the mighty one. You are the king of all kings and have created whatever has been created. And here we are standing before you, Abba, saying you are good and worthy to be praised. Looking for your favor, looking for your, your awesome, awesome, awesome grace towards us, Abba, to strengthen us and mold us and make us to understand what you've created in us and how to walk in it. And you open up this uh, book yet again, Abba, this chapter yet again, Abba, so that all of us who would drink from the fountain will be revived and, and, and not thirsty, Abba, <laughs> that we would, Abba, come to that place where we're satisfied in you. I bless you for your people, Abba, that are listening. I bless you, Abba, for your shalom that you've blanketed all the earth with, Abba. I know that there are troubles and strifes and factions and wars and rumors of wars all over the place, Abba. But I pray that you would give your people shalom. Hallelujah and amen. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1. So... <clears throat> Always hard for me to just start off without a little bit of a ramp. Um, remember last chapter, Doeg the Edomite kills all the priests and you know just kind of breaks my heart. Um, the only remaining priest is, is, is with David and now David's uh, on the run from Shaul. Chapter 23, verse one reads, and they informed David saying, See, the Philistines are, are fighting against Kelia, Kielia, and they are plundering the threshing floors. In, in other words, they're, they're taking the crops, they're taking the food. And David and cried of Yahuwah, saying, Shall I go and strike these Philistines? And Yahuwah said to David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kiela. Now, those two verses by themselves, you know, are, are just awesome. Let's look at verse number two carefully. That we'd inquired of Yahuwah. And, and so I taught a lesson many years ago when I was uh, a regular at the House of Israel. And I will this time put the link at the bottom. <laughs> Sorry. I, I will put the link at the bottom. And the link was called, Should I Go Up? I mean, the video was called, Should I Go Up? And I, I believe it was a powerful video. It's a long one. Uh, you can cut out some of the uh, advertisements on the front for the ministry and maybe some of the questions on the back end. But it was a, a I think, excellent exposition into this idea that David is walking in, which is there was something going on. His brain, his brain, his left, his heart said, Man, I want to do something about this. But his, his, 
How would you put that? Maybe his ruach, I don't know what to call this, says to him, I should ask Yahuwah first. Now I, I could put down the, the, the tablet and, and, and I could just talk about that on and on and on, but you need to go watch that video because it will do all of that on and on talking and scriptural references that the Most High allowed me to pull together to help us to understand that, especially when it comes to a large feat, especially then we need to ask the Most High. Now, somebody out there is listening to this video and saying, well, I asked him and I didn't hear anything. And, and, and so I get it, I get it. Sometimes we will put our voice out there and we would do it as purely as we know how. And we will ask the Most High for instruction, for permission. Me, in my case, I ask him for wisdom. I was like, Abba, I don't know what to do here. You said through Jacob that if I lack wisdom to ask you. And so keep down that trail because Yahusha says that my sheep know my voice. And another voice they would not obey. And so, and so I've got this once again, opportunity to challenge the set apart ones listening to these videos to say, are you one of his? Now, I'm not saying that like 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 some people have used. You didn't get healed because you don't have faith. I'm not I'm not using it like that. I'm actually coming from it the other direction and saying those of you who know that you've got that witness from him that you're his and he's yours. Hallelujah. Then then if you're unable to hear responses from him, then, then you know that either the response time hasn't come or something's blocking the response from coming. Either way, your, your faith is not shaken because you didn't hear anything. And if you didn't hear anything, I just want to say it should be very difficult for you to go and do a thing. So, so just because I asked and I didn't hear that doesn't mean, well, I guess I should make up my mind on my own. It, 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 it means that I should keep asking. I should ask again. I should look for counsel. I should do something so that I get to that place where I've got the confidence of what the Most High is asking of me. Because it's then and only then that I can really do the most damage to the kingdom of darkness. It's then and only then that I can stand in the midst of all sort of hellfire and trust the Most High that ultimately it's going to be well with me. Y'all hearing me? Because, because, because people were saying, I don't hear him. Some foolish doctrines are out there saying he don't even speak to people anymore. I don't know where this comes from except from the pit of hell. But what I'm here to tell you is that we should follow this pattern that Dawid had, which is he asked the Most High, shall I go strike the Philistines? Fill in the blank. <laughs> no pun intended there. Yahuwah said to him, go smite the Philistines and save Keilah. And <clears throat> Dawid's men said to him, see, we here in Yehuda are afraid. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines. So if you remember back a few chapters ago when Shaul should have killed Amalek and he should have killed all the sheep and the oxen and everything, he didn't. And he says, but the people said this to me and I was going to save the best of the sheep and stuff for you, Yahuwah. Well, he, he said, but the point I want to focus on is he said, the people said you cannot have good leadership that's listening to what the people said more than what Yahuwah said. Come on now. You, 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 there's no way I want to follow anyone whose who's first priority is not, I don't want to get those knots and mixed up. If their first priority is not following Yahuwah, then I don't want to be following them. Amen? All right, so the people were upset. I mean, they were like, oh boy, now you know we've got trouble here in Yehuda. It's bad enough for us now. Now you want to go up against the Philistines? And 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 so what Dawid did is he went back to the most high. He said, Yeah, yeah. Dawid inquired of Yahuwah once again. And Yahuwah answered, 
and said, Arise, go down to Elah, Kahila, for I am giving the Philistines into your hand. So now he's got a double portion of a confirmation before the Most High. And Dawid, I mean, I could only see him. Like at this point, he 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 is all but invincible because he knows that the Most High is going with him. All right. Sometimes, you know, you see men, you see women who, who, who speak from presumption and they know they're going to do a thing. I, mean, I know I'm going to do such and such. I know this is going to happen for me. And they, and they got all these things to say. Remember, in the Berkha Deshad, it goes something like this, you know, that we shouldn't be even saying that we're going to go somewhere uh, the next week or next year or something in trade, but we should be saying, if Yahuwah wills. And while that might seem uh, uh, extreme to some people, it doesn't seem so extreme to Dawid because he's asked him twice. And so in verse five, Dawid and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines and he led away their livestock and struck them a great smiting. Thus Dawid saved the inhabitants of Keilah. So when the Most High says a thing is, <laughs> it's going to be. And so he just walked that thing out, just like I want to encourage me and you to walk out those things the Most High has told us and to walk them out with confidence, not fear and trepidation, not, not, not wondering if it's going to be okay, not even superstition like, you know, oh, I better make sure this is that and this is that and this is that. What you better make sure is that you're following the will, the instruction, the clarity that the Most High will give you. So he took the, the, the their livestock uh, and, 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 and rescued the inhabitants of Ke Keilah. And it came to be when Abiatar, son of Ahimelech, fled to Dawid in Keilah, that he went down with a shoulder garment in his hand. And for those who don't know, the shoulder garment is, is the the thing that went on upon the priest's shoulder and had the koshen on it, or the 12 tribes of Israel. And it was, it was specifically used. It was a part of the clothing, garment, costume, however you want to put it, of the Levites. No, I didn't say that right. Of the Kohen, which of course were Levites, but the priests. So he comes down with the, uh, um, with the shoulder garment in his hand and Shaul was informed that Dawid had gone to Keilah, and Shaul said, Elohim is, is strange to, me, to my hand, and he has shut himself in by entering a town that, was, that has gates and bars. And Shaul summoned all the people to battle and to go down to Keilah to besiege Dawid and his men. And, and, so, and so, hold up. Did Shaul pray two times? Did he pray one time? It's not apparent here he prayed at all. But what he said was that Elohim has estranged him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that it has gates and bars. So that's how people throw the Most High is in it. That's how they say the Most High has done a thing when he ain't done a thing. That, that, that's how presumption kicks in. And I need the contrast to be crystal clear here. That we went to battle because he heard the Most High twice. Shaul's going to get Dawid because the circumstances look like it was. Now, I'm not telling you <laughs> that, that there's not a place for sight, but I'm telling you that Haruach, the word of Yahuwah, that faith in the Most High overrides circumstance every single time. And so <clears throat> David knew that Shaul was plotting evil against him and said to Abiatar, the priest, bring the shoulder garment here. And and, 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 and so I'm struggling here. Okay, 10. I don't know if I want to read 10 or talk. All right, I'm going to read 10 and I'll talk. And Dawi said, O oh, Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael, your servant is heard for certain that Shaul seeks to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Are the landowners of Keilah going to surrender me into his hand? And Shaul coming down, is Shaul coming down 
as your servant has heard, O oh, Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, I pray, let your servant know. And Yahuwah said, he's coming down. So here we have Dawi praying yet again, asking for direction. You know, sometimes you don't get direction because you don't ask for it. Sometimes you're not used to hearing direction. You can't interpret and discern direction because you got to start low and build up. The, the Most High is able to, to discipline us. I mean, train us. This is what I mean when I say discipline. Train us to hear his voice better. Train us to operate in obedience better, and, and et cetera. But you got to start somewhere. So, <coughs> so the part that I was struggling with a little bit was back in nine when Dawood says, says to uh, um, Ebiatar, bring the shoulder garment here. And so remember what I said the shoulder garment was. It was the clothing or a part of the uniform for the Kohen, for the priest. Is David a priest? What is he doing here? How is he taking the shoulder garment and then seeking the Most High with it on like he's a priest? No, no, like he's a Levitical priest. Maybe that's better. And I want to remind us two things. Witness there in the Torah and witness in the Brachat Shah. In the Brachat Shah is in Kepha or Peter's, one of his letters, where he quotes what's in Shemot chapter 19, that we were supposed to be a nation of priests, a nation of kings and priests. And so... Can he do that and just kind of like walk in there and do some Levitical stuff? Or well, it's not Levitical stuff, it's priestly stuff. And clearly, Dawid was after the order of Malik Sedek or the Melchizedek, if you prefer. And, and so he's walking in this authority that's likened to the authority that Yahusha HaMashiach is walking in after the order of Melchizedek. And so he sought the Most High, and the Most High told him, yeah, he's coming down. And, and he said, uh, and now he said, are the landowners of Keilah going to surrender me and my men into the hand of Shaul? Now remember, these are the ones they just rescued from the Philistines. And he's not going on, yeah, they're going to be good to me because, you know, I just rescued them and I beat down the Philistines and saved them, gave them some animals and, and stopped them from raiding the threshing floor. They got to do me this mellow. That's not what Dawid assumed. He asked the Most High. And the Most High said to him, and Yahuwah said, they are going to surrender you. <laughs> you. You ever bless somebody and they turn on you just like that? You're like, man, I, I should have let you. I, I remember many years ago, uh, I was uh, I was coming from the store and I went, I was going in this apartment building I lived in. And uh, as I was going in the door, you know, I turned the key and I opened the door and I was getting ready to go in and go up the steps. These two guys were behind me or over there and they were coming in my direction. And they were like, you know, like, hold the door, hold the door. And I held the door for them. And I walked in and I uh, got up the first flight of steps. I got up the second flight of steps. And all of a sudden, one ran in front of me and one was behind me with a knife. Give me your money. Now, this isn't quite the same as Kehila and David rescuing them from the Philistines. I only let him in the door, but I let him in the door Obviously, I let them in the door so they could try to rob me. And so you too probably got some examples in your life where you want to be a blessing and it turned into trouble for you. It turned into something that you feel like if I only had not, if I only had not. So where are you going with this? I can't frame. Okay, here's where I'm going. What I'm Where I'm going is that if, if I had learned to walk in the spirit, if my heart's intention was, was that the Most High would lead and guide me, if, if I believed that he was ordering my steps and I had surrendered my will in a, in a sort of non, 
How would you put that? Non-conditional manner. If I'm like Abayo, I'm releasing my will to you. The, the only reason I'm doing the things I'm doing is because I'm not hearing you say don't do them. The only reason I am doing the thing is because I, I know you told me to. In other words, I'm always looking for your will. Then who knows, right? Set apart ones. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to say what if scenarios, but let's just walk that out. And the thought that I'm trying to present to you, maybe it would have avoided that kind of thing. So David asked the question, the Most High says to him, yeah, they're going to they gonna turn you over and not even give it a second thought. Verse 13 says, and David and his men, about 600, arose and left Kehilah and went wherever they could. And Shaul was informed that David escaped from Kehilah and he ceased to go out. And David remained in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in the hill country of the wilderness of Ziph. And Shaul sought him every day, but Elohim did not give him into his hand. So, so that's that's kind of the basis that I'm that I'm making that previous statement about those guys not trying to rob me. You know, notice I haven't told the story of what happened there, but I did say try to rob me. So I blessed the most high that they didn't. At any rate, let's go back to the word. All right, so so he remained in the wilderness. In the strongholds. I was going to look at something here. Just give me one second. Um, in the strongholds. In the strongholds. So in the strongholds. And remain in the mountains. In the wilderness of Ziph. 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 Yeah, so I don't I don't think that that was what I was thinking it was. So let's just go back to the text. He remained in the uh, in the hill country, in the wilderness of Ziph, and Shaul sought him every day. Every day the devil was after him. Every day the devil might be after you, but Elohim did not give him into his hand. And David saw that Shaul had come out to seek his life while David was in the wilderness of Ziph at Choresh. And I think Choresh is the word that I was actually looking to look up, and I think that word means, let's just double check it. Let's just fact check a frame before he goes over there. Uh, uh, wood. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so that must be a Horash wood in the woods. So in Hebrew, that word means in the wood or in the woods. And so and so, he was basically out in the woods somewhere. And Yohanan, I thought he was gone. No, he's still hanging in there. <laughs> Shaul's son arose and went out to Dawida Koresh and strengthened his hand in Elohim. And this is what happens when people are covenant together. They, they strengthen each other when they're weak. They, they lift each other up when they fall. Hallelujah. Keep that in mind in your marriage covenants. Keep that in mind in your friendships and relationships. Keep that in mind when folk are going through and you don't know what to say. Ask the Most High what to say because people need encouragement. People need to hold on oftentimes until the Most High fills that gap in and their lives actually take, take a change or change better. You, change is this opportunity for doubt, for the enemy, but oftentimes the Most High is moving in the midst of that change. And sometimes a little encouragement can go a long way. All right. And he said to him, do not fear for the hand of Shaul. My father is not going to find you and you are to reign over Israel and I am to be next to you. Even my father Shaul knows that. Hold the phone. Remember, I've been talking about the hints that everybody knew he was going to be king. Well, you know, if any, if there was any doubt left from the chapters we already read, it seems as though Yohanan just dispelled those doubts by saying, you're going to be the king, you're going to reign, and I'm going to be next to you. And they made a covenant before Yahuwah, and Dawid remained in Koresh while Yohanan went to his own house. And the Ziphites came up to Shaul at Giba saying, is Dawid not hiding with us in the stronghold Koresh, in the hills of Hakilah? 
which is on the south of the wasteland. And now, O sovereign, by all the desire of your being, come down. Come down, and our part is to surrender him to the sovereign's hand. And the show said, Blessed are you of Yahuwah, for you have sympathy with me. I don't know what the uh, Ziphites had against Yahusha. I'm sorry. I don't know what, see how I'm, 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 my brain is connecting Dawid to Yahusha. So let me back that up and say it correctly. I don't know what the Ziphites had against Dawid. Um, but, but, but they've sided with Shaul and they're happy to spy out Dawid and to hand him over. Please go and prepare yet further and find out and see the place where his hideout is, who is seen who who has seen him there? For I am told he is very cunning. It's Shaul talking about Dawid. 23. So look and learn all about the hiding places where he hides, and you shall come back to me with certainty. Then I shall go with you, and it shall be, if he is in the land, that I shall search for him throughout all the clans of Yehuda. And they rose and went up and to, went up to Ziph before Shaul, while, Sha, while David and his men were in the wilderness of Mahon, in the desert plain on the south of the wasteland. And Shaul and his men went to seek him, and they informed David. So he went down to the rock and remained in the wilderness of Mahon. And when Shaul heard this, he pursued David in the wilderness of Mahon. And Shaul went on one side of the mountains. And Dawid and his men on the other side of the mountain. And Dawid was hurrying to get away from Shaul, for Shaul and his men were surrounding Dawid and his men to take them. Then the messenger came to Shaul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Hurry, hurry and come. He could see Dawid over there, maybe, you know. He could see his men, and they were closing in on him and it was all but definite that they were going to get him we we're going to get him and we we're going to finally kill that Dawid and we we're going to put him down and it's over for him and suddenly a messenger comes and says we gotta go the Philistines have invaded the land and although Shaul had an evil spirit on him he wasn't all crazy yet and it was more important to him to go and rescue Israel than it was for him to catch Dawid. So Shaul turned back from verse 28, turned back from pursuing Dawid and went again, went against the Philistines. Therefore, they called the place Shelah Hamach Lechot. And Dawid went up from there and remained in the strongholds of Engedi. So while I look up, Sila Hamach Lechot. I'm going to talk a little bit about this whole scenario because all David is doing at this point is the best he can to save his own life while trusting Elohim. Maybe I should turn it the other way around because he's trusting Elohim and doing the best he can to save his own life and the life of his men. And in the midst of that, the Most High was gracious enough to him to let the Philistines attack. What do you mean gracious to let the Philistines attack? You, you know the Philistines are going to likely kill some people. You know there's likely to be drama over there that, 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 that could affect people's lives seemingly negatively. I'm reminded that, that Adam and Kawa, Adam and Eve, if you will, never understood, had any interaction with, had not uh, fellowshiped with this idea of good and evil. When I read stories like this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded that, that even now, we don't have a good handle on what is good, Tov, and what is evil, Ra. We, we think that evil and good is based upon what impact it has to me personally. And if that were the case, then, then 
everybody or many bodies will receive a lot of evil so that I could get good. And that would be okay in our selfish minds. And Dawid, I don't think, wished anything evil on Israel. I don't think he was thinking selfishly like that. Of course he wanted to live, but everything the Most High made wants to live. No, no, nothing, nothing that he made is like saying, oh, I just want to die if he's got a sound mind. That's the devil's world. All right, I've kind of tangented it out a little bit. Let me pull it back in. And so, and so where I'm trying to go here is that the Most High in his own wisdom, in his own righteous wisdom, allowed the Philistines to attack so that Dawid would get away. See, see, Seba and Sheba, he's given as a ransom for Israel. See, you, you and I, we, we've got a favor that sometimes we don't recognize that the Most High has blessed us sometimes at the expense of others. But wait a minute. That means that sometimes he might bless somebody else at the expense of us. In other words, we might bear the burden of their blessing or they might bear the burden of, our, burden of our blessing. I don't know if that's okay with you all, but I want you to marinate on it because each one of us is in some kind of relationship with somebody else, preferably somebody in the kingdom. Definitely probably other people outside the kingdom. But the, 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 this, this interaction of you know, blessings and bearing the blessings for others, submitting, suffering so someone else can have, this is a concept that's throughout the scriptures. And wouldn't you know it, it's something that the Messiah, even Yahusha, knew very well. Kepha went as far as to say that we were immersed into his sufferings. Meaning that sometimes you're going to have to submit to something in order for somebody else to be blessed. You're going to have to come out of that childish mentality that says it's all about me. And you have to get to that place where it's the will of Elohim that's important. And so and so if if the burden is on me right now, then I believe that he will hold me up in the midst of it. I believe that he won't put more on me than I can bear. I believe that all things are working together for my good. And these kind of things give you that ammunition against this, 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 this weakness of faith, this, this superficial faith that so many walk in. You got to be able to bear up under some stuff in order to walk this walk out. I don't care what they say out in the world, but if you've walked this walk for any length of time, you found that sometimes there's sufferation that you are ordained to walk through. So strengthen up in Mashiach, bless the Most High, keep praying, keep seeking him, and watch him do that thing that he means to do in your life and in the life of those around you. But somebody's, oftentimes, somebody's got to make a sacrifice. All right. So in the meantime, I'm looking up uh, Sheila Hamalech, Hamalech, Hamal. That looks different than King James, boy. Hamal Lechot. It says in the Brown Drivers Briggs, a division of course, class, share, allotment, division of part of priests, Levites, a technical term of organization. So that doesn't help me a lot. So I may have to leave us in a place where I don't like leaving us, which is in the I don't know zone, but it won't be because I didn't try. Um, yeah, I have to look at that a little bit more. And I'll tell you that David went up from there and he went to the strongholds of Engedi, and that's the end of the chapter. Um, blessed be the Most High because uh, he's opened up his understanding to us and praise be uh, the Most High because he's helped us to understand how principles operating here in plain sight have an underpinning in the spirit that are eternal, that are, that are working 
even now in our lives. So I just bless you, Abba. I bless you for the people who are watching and listening. And I pray that you would just just stick to them, Abba. The, the, the nuggets and the, the, the wisdom and the, and the righteous uh, uh, perceptions that are obvious from these teachings to their, to their nefesh, Abba, that they might walk forward praising you, lifting you, exalting you, no matter what it looks like. And to all my set-apart friends and family in Mishpukha, I say shalom. Shalom.